I've got a potpourri of pearls here. I will tell you, with maybe one exception, I have used every one of these. I wouldn't tell you or suggest that you consider these if I hadn't found them useful. Uh, my conflict of interest hasn't changed in the last couple hours, so it's the same thing it was last time, none of which is relevant. Okay, the burning red scrotum syndrome. For some reason, I've become known in my local community as the genital guy. I, I, I'm sure my mother would be proud, but anyhow. So I've listed in black the things that have been published useful for this, neuroleptic drugs like gabapentin, pregabalin, doxycycline, oral and systemic beta blockers. You know, in my hands, none of these things works worth a damn. This works. Indomethacin. It's one of the strongest anti-inflammatories we have. Why it works particularly well for this, I have no earthly idea. It's 50 milligrams, two to three times a day. However, remember, it was displaced by a lot of other NSAIDs because it can cause horrible headaches and serious GI upset up to and including gastritis. So start slow, work up. 50 milligrams once a day, always after a meal so that it's buffered. 50 milligrams twice a day, see how you're doing. If you're better, stop. If not, 50 milligrams three times a day. This works. And people get so much better, they can stop the drug. Indomethacin. Generalized GA. That's pretty nasty looking. So what can you do? You can traumatize every little thing. You can give them steroids in every way humanly possible. Eczema laser actually works, but you can't eczema laser the whole body because the port's so small. You can use off-label things if you can get them for your patients, including all of these drugs for psoriasis and eczema. They all work to some extent. This works. Methotrexate. You've all heard about methotrexate all afternoon, but some really well done studies, one in particular, a shout out to the University of Connecticut, did one. And methotrexate works. You usually can get away with less than, but it almost always works at 12 and a half milligrams per week, single weekly dosing. But it may work at less, so I start at less. I start at seven and a half see how they do, if it's gonna work. It works pretty quickly. If not, I'll increase it to 10, then 12 and a half. This almost always works for generalized GA. What happens after they're clear? Joe, I think you need to have a talk on that, maybe next year. Everybody tells us how to treat something, but no one tells us how to stop, or when to stop, or where to stop. Taper, cold turkey, never stop. Nobody knows. With this, you can usually stop. I taper down. I don't know if it's right or wrong, but that's what I do, and they can get off. Molluscum contagiosum, some of you may have seen this slide before in the past. I'm a firm believer in hyperthermia. Nothing could be cheaper, simpler, or safe than heat. And this is based on a Chinese study where they used an infrared device that we don't have access to, but you can use a heating pad. I'll show you the one I like to use. This was done on children and adults, 30 minutes, once weekly for 12 weeks. And the majority of patients cleared. I have found this useful in both children and in adults who have suprapubic upper inner thigh or even genital molluscum. You put that heating pad on there so that it reaches a temperature of and on the box of the heating pad. It tells you what the maximum temperature is by law. 111 degrees Fahrenheit, 44 degrees centigrade. 30 minutes, once a week. There's nothing that says you can't go past 12 weeks. If you're getting really good results and it's not totally clear, go to 13 or 14 or 15 or 16. Who the hell cares? It's heat. And this is the one I like to use. I have no financial interest in Sunbeam. I don't even know who owns them. But it's soft. It's very pliable, so you can put it around like anterior and posterior axillary lines if they have molluscum there. It fits nicely over the genitalia. I bought one and tried it. <laughs> it was warm and interesting. But it was very tolerable. It was 
extremely tolerable. So, and I've used this now, I'm right near three universities, I see young people with genital and perigenital molluscum every single day of my practice, this works. How about recalcitrant warts? Ugh. Okay, number one, if it's a kid who hasn't had their HPV vaccine, give it to them or get them to get it. I know that the HPV types that cause common warts and plantar warts and flat warts, they're not in the HPV vaccine. Those are the genital wart types and then oncogenic types. The only one you can get now is the nanovalent vaccine. But this was six cases of recalcitrant warts who got their HPV vaccine and their other warts Warts on the bottom of the foot, warts around the nails of the hands, warts elsewhere, all went away. And then this was a larger review paper that highlighted 75 cases like that. And I've now had a bunch of cases to remember. HPV vaccine used to stop in late 20s, but it's allowable up to age 45 and most insurance pays for it. So if you have recalcitrant warts and they haven't gotten HPV vaccine, even though the wart types that cause those warts aren't in the vaccine, Give them the vaccine. Okay, what else can you do? Okay, so we're gonna talk about all of these, and now you're right. So I'm just gonna highlight three things. One is adapalene. Adapalene in the hands of Indian dermatology providers from the subcontinent of India is wonderful for plantar warts. You must pair because it's hard for this drug to penetrate through a thick hyperkeratotic wart in the bottom of the foot. So you pare it down till you just get to just pinpoint bleeding. Then they start using adapalene. They used 0.1. I use the prescription 0.3. It goes on at night, overnight, under occlusion. And you just keep doing it you get close to 100% resolution. Now, I'm not talking about huge mosaic warts that cover the whole bottom of the foot, but reasonably recalcitrant plantar warts, number one. Number two, bleomycin's been around and been used for warts for a very long time. I'm just reviewing, you dilute it down to one unit per cc. You shoot it right into the wart. You do that every month. There's probably not a wart that will resist it, although published data is somewhere in the high 60s to high 90% response rate. Just remember, bleo hurts, not only when you do it, but it hurts a little later, so don't do it like I did to the starting pitcher of the high school baseball team that was in the regional playoffs. It was not a good, anyhow, just remember it hurts later. And then the last thing is oral zinc sulfate. If you live in Brazil or in South Korea, this is your go-to drug for recalcitrant warts that don't respond to a little liquid nitrogen. It's given 10 milligrams per kilogram per day. If it doesn't work in two months, it's not gonna work. You limit it to about 120 milligrams of elemental zinc. You can figure that out by multiplying 23% times the number of milligrams of zinc sulfate. So if it's 200 milligrams of zinc sulfate times 23%, that's 46 milligrams, you could give three of those a day. You wanna keep it 120, 130 milligrams max. Why? Because it can cause gastric perforation. But it also is good for recalcitrant warts. Intralesial bleo, oral zinc sulfate, and topical adapalene, particularly for plantar warts. Genital warts, in Europe, they do combination therapy for all genital warts off-label here, but just so you know, and the way they do that is, if you have a few warts, few warts, you ablate them with whatever you want, CO2 laser, electrodesiccation, liquid nitrogen, and then you give them immunotherapy, that's imiquimod 5 or 3.75, doesn't make a difference, every day for two months. If you have more than five, but they're not particularly large, but you got a bunch of warts. They do immunotherapy for two months, then they do ablation, then two more months of immunotherapy. If you have giganto warts, then you do 12 to 16 weeks of immunotherapy first, then you do your ablation, and then two more months of immunotherapy. That is off-label way of using immunotherapy in this country, but combination therapy is the way to treat genital warts. How many of you see this every single day? It's not usually why the patient comes in, right? You've done your thing and they say, oh, but wait, I'm getting this now. Can you make it go away? 
solar purpura, please don't call it senile purpura, unless you don't like the patient. Then call it senile purpura, it's great. You won't see him again. Solar purpura. I will guarantee you this helps. Sometimes it's amazing, sometimes it just helps, but it's always good for a nice box of chocolate at Christmas. And that's this, citrus bioflavonoids. This has actually been published, but apparently nobody read this paper but me. And it's actually quite good because these are the citrus bioflavonoids. These are the things they do. Look at what they do. Increase capillary strength and stability. Decrease capillary permeability so that blood isn't leaking out. And inhibits all the ACEs that are busy eating up your connective tissue because of lifelong exposure to ultraviolet light. Now, the best thing, I don't like using brands, but if I just tell you citrus bioflavonoids, that's meaningless because there are three million of them available on Amazon. These are the two brands that contain Swanson and Solgar. These are the two that contain all of the citrus bioflavonoids, all of them, all wrapped up into one pill. How many pills a day do you give one or two? If one works, fine, you're done. If one doesn't quite hit the, the mark, you give two. Is this gonna cost your patients a massive amount of money? Swanson's is six cents a pill. I just looked this up. These are current prices. The other one is 12 cents a pill. Not expensive. And it's good for a present at Christmas. Okay, chondrodermatitis nodularis helicis. You can do all of these things, surgical and otherwise. You can freeze it. You can shoot in steroids. This works. Nitroglycerin patch, probably because it's increasing blood supply. There are several different strength disease. The one you want is the one that releases five milligrams of nitroglycerin over 24 hours. It's a little stiff, so you have to really kind of bend it, but you just put it, it's self-sticking. You just put it right on the lesion. It's 12 hours on, 12 hours off, 12 hours on, 12 hours off for two months. Chondrodermatitis nodularis helicis disappears without a mark. It's incredibly good. Okay, how many of you have seen a patient like this? She lost her mother. She started losing her hair. She came in and I said, oh, it's called, I did a hair pull and, you know, I pulled out half her hair. And I, they were all telogen hairs. Oh, I said, it's called telogen effluvium. It's after some sort of inciting event. You know, you'll get over it eventually. I lost my mother too. Give me a hug. Everything will be fine. And now she comes in with a bag like this. A year later, I'm losing this much hair every single day. Still, Dr. Rosen not a happy camper. Chronic telogen effluvium, how can you treat it? Tell them to wait longer, <laughs> doesn't work. Topical or interlesional steroids sometimes, spironolactone sometimes. My favorite thing to actually do for this is oral minoxidil. Comes as 2.5 milligrams. If you go below 0.6, you have to have it compounded, so I don't usually do that. Tell them to take the 2.5, get a pill cutter, cut it in half, cut it in half. Now you got 0.6 milligrams. Start with that once a day, and you can build up to the full 2.5 milligrams. The problem is that at 1.25 and 2.5 milligrams a day, about one in three people will grow facial hair. So they'll grow hair here, it makes them happy. They grow hair here, and I say, don't you want to look like me? Doesn't work. That's not a good way to counter that. So start low. Oftentimes, the lowest dose is all you need for this. It really puts a stop to the chronic telogen effluvium. Once it stabilizes, then it regrows. Frontal fibrosing alopecia affecting the frontal scalp, but also almost always the eyebrows as well. So this is a scarring alopecia. And when you're dealing with scarring alopecia, if it burns or stings, you're trying to relieve symptoms. That you can do. You may stop or slow the hair loss, but you must be realistic and tell them you may not regrow all the hair they've lost. You may not regrow any, although sometimes you do. And these are all the things you can do. When you see a list like that, you know nothing's really great. This works. It's Dr. Friedman's favorite drug, hydroxychloroquine, put it in the water. It actually helps this, it stabilizes it, it relieves their symptoms. And you may get some regrowth. There's a few viable follicles left there, and you may get some regrowth, particularly of the eyebrows. 
Or the other thing you can do is use finasteride in high dose, the full benign prostatic hypertrophy dose, five milligrams a day in women. Yes, you will not cause any harm, and it may actually help. Grover's disease, <laughs> those itchy old guys, <laughs> can't you fix this for me? Mm, no. But you can try these things. This is what's been promoted, Acetrat and PDT, topical steroids. They all are basically worthless. This works, but you're not going to be able to do it routinely because you won't get insurance approval for it. But what works? is actually dupilumab at standard doses. So what I do is I get samples from my friendly rep, and I say, look, I'll trade you. You give me a bunch of samples, and I guarantee I'll prescribe it at least once a month for the next year. I don't make that deal. But I, I'm thinking it in my head. I'll pay you back. And they're willing to give you samples. This actually relieves it, and once it's gone, it's gone. So you don't need to keep doing this forever. You do the loading dose, then you do the every two week dose, and it actually relieves Grover's disease. Bad lichen planus of the nails, the thing it responds to is baricitinib. It's a jack, you know all those things you gotta do before you start a jack. Baricitinib's probably the mildest of all of them. You start with four milligrams a day, you have gotta let the nail grow out, so you're gonna do that probably a minimum of six months. Then you drop it down to two milligrams a day for another six months, then you can it and it's over with. Scabies, those are the three things now. Spinosad's the newest drug, just approved. That's the same thing you use for head lice. Those are the three things that are CDC recommended. You can do any of them, one to two weeks apart, do it twice, or combine ivermectin with any of the topical things. Do remember? There is now ivermectin and permethrin resistance of scabies in this world, including in the United States. Acne, uh, uh, actinic keratosis, painless PDT. This is how to do painless PDT. You apply your levulin, no incubation period, not 15 minutes, not 30 minutes, not an hour, not 15 hours, not overnight. No incubation. You shine the light on immediately for 30 minutes, 30, 45, and 60 minutes all did equally well, and you have painless PDT. But now I'm adding oral vitamin D. How do I do that? 10,000 international units for 14 days, once a day for 14 days, because your response rate is even higher. Painless PDT, add vitamin D for 14 days, high dose, 10,000 units. You're not going to cause anybody any harm with some vitamin D. People who complain about their scalp burning and stinging and, oh my God, first get a neurologist to look at them for organic reasons, but when that doesn't show anything, it's related to anxiety, depression, and psychoses. My favorite drug is Paxil, 20 milligrams a day that scalp dysesthesia gets better. Or maybe they're just asleep, I don't know, but they get better. Hydradenitis, you know all the things you can do, you've heard lectures about this, but I think the thing that's most impressive off-label is combining with surgery. What I do routinely now is adalimumab for 12 weeks before surgery, then surgery, and there are all kinds of different surgical interventions from unroofing to excision, they continue their adalimumab right through the perioperative period, two weeks or so, and then another 10 weeks. So it's 12 weeks and then another 12 weeks with surgery, not instead of surgery, it's with surgery. This is the best result you can get. Eczema, you know about all these things, and we just had, I can't pronounce that one either, refluumast. But another thing you can do is add cimetidine. 25 to 40 milligrams, milligrams per kilogram per day. Most of your adults are gonna get four 100 milligram caps three times a day, at max out at 1200 milligrams. Does it help? Yes, we have all these other options. This is just another safe drug you can add. Melasma, you can do these things, lasers, triluma, oral tranexamic acid, but what works is this. Cysteamine, it blocks the production of pathologic pigment. But you have to do the right type, the right way, and this is the end of my talk, you get what you pay for. 
if you get Walmart's version for $55, it's not as good as buffered, well-refined cystiamine that you can get online. It's more expensive, but it actually works. The right way is 15 minutes, otherwise it stings and burns. Wash it off, you're done, you do it every day. Melasma just fades away. And in the theme of the meeting, that's it from Yoga Now. Thank you very much.